Hi guys, it's Tim from Advanced In Car Technologies. I hope you're all well. It's been a good few months since we've uh, done a, a YouTube review video on a dash camera, so I thought it was about time, um, and it, it came in quite nicely because today we're actually reviewing the DOD LS 470W Plus, which is a really new camera from DOD Tech. Uh, thanks again to them for sending it through to us uh, so that we could do one of our reviews. They've obviously seen them all our other ones on YouTube, so I thought I'd just do a quick review on this. So it's gonna follow the same sort of style. I'll do an unboxing and review of all the different features, and then I'm gonna split it down into two videos, one like this, and then the next one, all the different footages at night, etc., etc. Um, so you can see it, it worked quite well, the Thinkware, so I'm gonna follow that style with this one. So let's get started. Got the box, got it through today. Already opened it up, and here we go. The LS 470W Plus, and let me just focus in on it, make sure it's all invisible view for you. So it's a full HD GPS dash cam, and its biggest selling point is this ISO 12800. And this is what's going to be giving you awesome, awesome nighttime footage. Um, it really amplifies the light, and all you uh, photography guys out there that really know your stuff, it's all going to be quite exciting for you. So it's again using Sony Exmor sensors, it's got a CPL filter to help uh, reduce the glare from your windshield. Let's just quickly look at some of the features, zoom in on that. So we've got WDR technology, so wide dynamic range, we've got a 7G sharp lens, 150 degree view angle uh, and a load of other features but I'll go into a bit more depth uh, as we're going through the video. Specifications, um, let me just zoom in on there quickly for you. So you can see, um, just briefly running down what it can do. Uh, and like I said, I'll go through all of these other features later on in the video. And there's some nice looking thumbnails that are there. So quite a nice looking display. Now, this camera is a bit different to the normal sort of cameras that we do videos on. Normally, they're always very sort of slim, no screens, really good mounts, all that sort of stuff. But I thought I'd do something a bit different. I need to open my eyes to these cameras that have got screens. They're doing really popular with like Nextbase and DoD basically supply Nextbase. And um, so yeah, let's let's just get on with it. There's the camera. Let's open her up. Looks very tight. Okay, so there we go. Um, got quite a few buttons on the on the back here, and this is the first time I'm really looking at it. Oh, there you go, you can see my camera in the background. Let's just focus on on there. There we go. So obviously the GPS, they, they rate it as a 10 times faster, so you get really accurate um, readings. Got some control panels buttons here and on here. Let's move this out of the way. Uh, we've got a HD out here. Just normal sort of information there. Um, we've got a micro USB point there, that's going to be for your power and stuff like that later on when you're plugging it in and uh, we'll do a turn on video very shortly with it. Um, AV out, we've got a power button and snapshot mode. So this is basically giving us identifiers about that this camera is going to be able to take pictures out and about, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but we'll, we'll test that to see if that actually happens or if it's just a quick snapshot function. Um, got a sticky film there, so make sure you take that off. and you can adjust the CPL filter. I don't know if you can see that, just like that. There you go. Okay, so let's just see if it's got any power in it to start off with. Let's turn it on. Got a little red light there. Ah, there we go. Now, we're gonna see all these different functions around here. This is really good because it means I don't have to plug it in, but let's turn it off for the time being so I can show you other stuff in the box. So it's just turning off there. So let's just do that there. I'm gonna refocus everything in. Okay, so small little accessories box. Oh, just wanted to double check. And the SD card. Now the thing to remember with these cameras is that DOD don't actually supply them with the memory card. It's an optional extra, um, and it's something that you need to bear in mind, okay? So, got a small little sticky mount. I'm probably gonna be using this one in my car because I don't like the big sucker mounts. Um, so this will be the one for me in my car. Uh, 
this is a slightly more bigger sucker mount. Um, this is a more of a permanent solution. This one is so that you can move it between vehicles, hence why it's got this uh, clicker. The smaller ones are actually quite good like this. Uh, it get, does a really solid sort of suck to the screen, then you can slide in and out. But I want the permanent version, so I'm gonna be going for that one. So even though it's battery powered, um, they do say that it's got a big old battery in it. So it's lasting as three times as long as its, uh, its unit before. So that's, that's obviously gotta be a good thing, right? Um, and then this is just basically the uh, power cable. Um, standard cigarette lighter adapter there. And then we've got your micro USB over there as well. So let's move all that to the side and let's talk about this camera. So, as I said, got a Sony Exmor Seymour sensor in it, 7G sharp glass, which is basically, it's got seven layers of glass to be able to give you that really good um, picture view. Um, it's got an ISO range up to 12,800, and that means that it's gonna automatically change the lighting. So for poor nighttime footage, it's gonna boost that light so that you get a really good crisp uh, view on, on your picture. Um, it's got the 10 times speed GPS processor, so basically it's gonna be recording your speed about 10 times every second. Um, or oh, sorry, ten, yeah, 10 times per second. And it will, I read on this that on the screen you can have a heads up display function so you can see the speed you're going and all that sort of stuff. So rather than having an active screen, and that's why I've always been against screens, I don't believe in having a, an image on display all the time. And if it's got a heads up display, then it kind of gets around that problem. So, um, it's got a parking mode in it. That's obviously something to bear in mind. So you can leave it plugged in into your vehicle, use like a power magic device, that sort of thing. Um, it's a three inch 16 by nine display, uh, wide screen, so you can watch all your videos um, when you get home or if you by the side of the road, that sort of thing. I think that's quite why Nextbase have, have done quite well. It's got the CPL filter, as I mentioned. Make sure that you don't get those reflections on your windscreen and all that sort of jazz. Um, what else have we got? So, WDR technology means that it's a well-balanced exposure for all the pictures that it's, it's taking, out of video even. Um, makes the night shots a lot brighter and, and, and it stops too much exposure uh, so that it gets the best picture, picture as possible. It supports 64 gigabyte memory cards and 128 gigabyte micro SDHC and SDXC memory cards. I really like cameras that can take a, a good bash of, uh, of, of, of picture quality. Okay, so just to get a bit geeky with you um, and just give you a few more uh, bits of on the specification, um, it's got a 150 degree ultra wide angle uh, lens so that you're obviously getting that really good picture. It, you can have your own stamp on there, so your reg, it's recording date, time, all of that sort of stuff. It's got a free axis uh, accelerometer G sensor in it, and you re can record from 1080 at 30 frames per second, 720 at 60 frames per second, uh, all the way down to 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. It can take pictures, like I showed you earlier with that, that button there, from 2048 to 1536, all the way up to 4032 by 3024, and it goes from three megapixels all the way up to 12. It records in the MOV format. Uh, iPhone users will probably relate to that. And uh, yeah, so it's got all of these buttons along the top. On the next part of the video, we're gonna be going into some of the features on the screen together, see what it's doing. Um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's move on, get it powered up, and we'll go from there. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna run through some of the features uh, inside the camera. Um, it has got battery power on, on its own. Um, I'm not too sure how long the battery lasts. No one's actually said about, uh, about the cameras, but you'll get a good idea. Take it out for a test run and see what happens. Um, one thing I didn't mention was the guide that you get with the camera. And it's always, people love guides. So you've got your, your contents. Um, you can see what it's coming with. Uh, you, get a, you get an installation CD for your software as well all the different functionality, all the different buttons, what they do, etc. Uh, camera controls, etc. Just, just normal sort of stuff you come to see in, in, in a user guide. Um, I'm gonna be referring to some of it as, I, as I'm going through 
the, the demo of how this, this all works. Um, so what I have done is I've rigged up a power supply and I'm going to plug it in. So this will show, in essence, when you're turning your ignition on, this is what your camera's going to do. So as you can see, power goes in at the top. Blue light, DOD. So let's see if we can get this a bit closer. Hopefully you won't see the, uh, the screen moving too much. We've got LED lights here, so it might be a bit fuzzy. So, okay, so it's now recording. We can tell that by the, the red icon there. Um, let's see if we can get the video a bit better. It's recording at 1080p. We've got the wide dynamic range. Um, we haven't got motion detection on because it's, it's not parked up at the moment. Um, we've not, we're not using the time lapse function and this is showing its ISO and it should be changing as, as I'm moving, which is right. So it's picking up on different lights as, there you go. So that shows that that side is working. Okay, along the top, we know it's recording, it's at 1080p. Uh, we've got the, uh, how long it's looping for. On, in this case, I've had it in three minutes. Uh, that's the exposure, so minus one. Uh, you can turn the audio on and off. There you go. You can see that we're in power. GPS status is there. Uh, and this is all about white balance. And down here is your time date and other functions that you've got going on it. Okay, so to change camera mode, you push the M button. Oh, let's stop the recording. So now we stopped mode. That's now picture mode, and you can push it by taking that, and you've got all your all your picture settings up there. So go back to the M. That's so that we can we can view the files, and you can see all the data stamps down there. Um, so let's see if we can. Uh, those are pictures. There you go, and uh, yes, yeah, working quite well. Push play. There we go. It's showing a video that I recorded earlier. And there we go. Won't go into too much on that. Um, so there we go. We're now back to the video mode. So that was the photo mode that we've just done. Um, playback, I've just shown you. So let's go through some of the menus. So we've got M, you use, sorry, the menu is button is there. We use these buttons here. Quite quickly, that button there, that's for file lock. So if you do get into an incident, you can push that button and it locks the, the files down. So we've got, you use the buttons on the left-hand side. They are a bit plasticky, so make sure you don't keep it held down for too long. Push one, and then you use the shutter button. So wide dynamic range, on. Resolution, you can change your resolutions. I'm going 1080. Exposure value, minus one. White balance, auto, or daylight, whatever you want to do. Record audio, I normally have audio off on mine, so let's turn it off. Date stamp, yeah, you should always have your date stamps on. Loop recording, off two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Um, it's up to you, really. Um, I'm going for free. G sensor, middle, that's so if someone bashes, all that sort of stuff. Plate stamp, um, you use the up and down arrows to change it. I've just put AICT and then a few spaces, so you just push the shutter button to OK it. I move across, blank, blank, blank. Okay, so driver fatigue warning. This is to warn you if, you, if, you get, if you've been driving for too long, it will tell you after a certain amount of time. GPS logging, yeah, keep that bad boy on. Heads up display, so this will be when the car starts moving. It's not gonna be showing you a, a screen that you can see what's going on when you're moving, because that's not really allowed. Um, but you can change it to, to that after 15 seconds. I'm hoping to get the GoPros in the car so we can get a look at how this all works, so we can try that out. So let's pop it in 15. Speed warning, if you go over a certain speed, it will tell you, so let's just turn that off. Time zone, should automatically pick it up from the GPS, but that's if you need to change it. And password settings. Speed units, miles per hour, turn the image upside down or not. Time lapse mode. Path analysis, um, path analysis, um, that's another little feature that just kind of goes in. It calculates the total distance, travel time, and average speed of the journey from beginning to thing. So basically, it's, it's like a logger, and it just goes in a bit more detail. Parking mode, on or off, I put it on. Obviously, tells you you need to have your battery thing in. Um, and there you go, there's your ISO stamp. Now, if you push the menu button twice, it goes into a different menu. So you've got format memory card, so you can do that, that's always handy. You've got your language, date and time, flicker reduction, and that's, you get that with um, certain types of TVs, so you can change the hertz. Turn the beep off, I normally always turn them off, but I've kept it on for this, uh, this video. Uh, screen saver, 
This is so that it um, comes on so you're not got an active picture every so often, so three minutes probably. Video output, whatever you use. Speed stamp, on or off. Firmware version, and then factory reset. So basically, in essence, that is the camera, its menu structure, uh, and how it all works. So what I will do is I will just explain these different light modes. So if you bear me two seconds, I will tell you what they are. Um, I didn't mention it, but the, the parking mode you can you can set really. Um, you can have it to switch on when it automatically. Oh, there you go. There's the uh, um, heads up display feature, so it's going to tell you what speed you're going. Um, it's quite cool actually. It's a very because it's a quite. You might not be able to tell from the from the video, but that's actually a really nice display, and I'll definitely get some action of that with the GoPro, I think, because that will look quite cool in the car. Um, so yeah, parking mode comes in after 10 minutes, and uh, you can then just leave it if your car lets you, or like I said, you can team up with like the PowerMagic Pro, Smart Power, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so let me just find the what the different lights do for you. Okay, so steady blue light means it's, it's charging. Steady pink, powering up while charging or is in playback mode. Steady red is in standby mode but not charging. Flashing red means it's recording and not charging, so that's that little bit there. And flashing blue and pink means it's recording video and charging. So let's go back here. And so now we're now recording. So we got a little light there. Your camera will do this automatically as you are in the car, but it's just so that if you, if you were out and had to take some video footage of if you're in an accident, that sort of thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and pop this in the car, see how it all works, get some GoPros on so we can see what the screen's doing, how it's recording, and then I'm going to create a separate video of daytime, nighttime, add some jazzy little music so you can have a quick watch of it. Hopefully 30 seconds of each will be sufficient um, and different sort of driving scenarios. So this is the DoD Tech. LS470W Plus with the WDR with the CPL filter, nice three inch to screen. Um, I think it's going to be a really good camera and I think it's going to do really, really well over here in the UK. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so something that I forgot to show was the software. Um, now, I downloaded this from the DoD Tech website. Um, it's all come in Chinese, but or Korean or whatever it is. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to settings here obviously miles per hour, and it's this box here that changes it all to English. Hit this button there, away you go. So, all you need to do to add a file is add, should open one up, let's just go for that one there, or that one there, let's go for number seven. It's gonna load it. Now whilst it's loading it, um, you've got down here all of your different gauges, miles per hour, all that sort of stuff, and you can see where you're heading, you've got a snapshot button, map mode which is the one over here um, so we're, we're zooming along here let me just pause it so we've got our file we've got our map over here that you can see where I've done the, a very short journey maximum speed average speed total distance my longitude and latitude my g-forces and all of the other good stuff here play backwards forwards we've got what ISO we've got running up here We've got our date stamp, our time stamp, what camera we're using. There's that AICT that we put in, traveling at 21 miles per hour. So let's click play. It's a very, very simple interface. There is a Windows interface and a Mac interface. I haven't seen the Mac interface yet or tried it, uh, but looking at the file sizes, there's a big difference. The Windows is 85. The other one is, I think from memory, about five. So it's probably not going to be as all bells and whistles as this one, but it's going to give you what you need uh, to be able to view your footage in the event of an emergency. Okay, um, so yeah, this is the PC viewer. Um, I hope it's kind of showed you what the software's like. Stay tuned. Make sure you like and subscribe the channel if you like these types of videos. And obviously I'll get it to pop in somewhere around here uh, so that you can watch the footage and uh, make your own decisions. So uh, thank you very much for watching.